Hello. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of lithography by making some germanium aluminum test wafers. And uh, so it's just a layer of uh, silicon wafer, layer of germanium, layer of aluminum. And what we're doing is we're, we're building test structures to check and see uh, how well uh, the uh, germanium acts as a, as a decent semiconductor. Uh, this is for a, a project related to photodiodes where we're, uh, we're making actually light activated bipolar junction transistors. So these are just test structures to check the quality of the material that we're receiving from outside the lab. So today I'm going to do some lithography. I'm going to do an aluminum step. I'm going to pattern a layer of aluminum, which is the second lithography step. Second. And uh, I'm going to pattern a layer of germanium which is the first step. There's only two steps. Um, two lithography steps and two edges. So, uh, pretty simple and straightforward. So, uh, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Okay. So, I am going to do step two on our test structures for germanium. Uh, this is Germanium test mask, the metal. These are two inch wafers. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and put this in the mask liner and uh, I'm gonna show you how uh, this works. So we'll take the mask out. Okay. There's the mask. Okay. See if we can zoom in a little bit here. All right. So this panel is the mask holder. We want to make sure that the the orientation is correct. The words are on the bottom, and there's a dark side and a shiny side. The dark side goes down, that's the oxidized chrome. And that goes in the holder. Close the holder thingy. And I come over here and I press a button and it applies vacuum to the mask. Now the mask is held in there. And I can flip it over. Oh wait! Always put your hand in front of it in case the vacuum fails. So I flip it over. I slide it into our Seuss mask aligner. And I press change mask. Alright. Next. This is a very nicely engineered vacuum chuck. The wrong size. So goodbye. So now, two inch vacuum chuck. That goes in. These rarely get used. In the academic world, usually uh, we're at four and six inch wafers. This is 20 year old technology. Um, in this project, I'm using these two-inch wafers uh, because somebody's reactor is an old-style reactor. This just sits in here. And now I'm ready to put the wafer on. Okay, I seem to be recording. Here's my little two inch wafer. With flawed aluminum on there, I could pop in a, some SEM imaging of this guy into the video.
wafer flap goes down. Now we press a button over here labeled load. It says pull slide and load substrate onto truck, which I have done. I should probably make an effort to center it a little better. Alright, once it slid in there, I press enter. Alright, now I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that, but it says full slide and load substrate onto check. Press enter. Now, Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. The wafer rises up to contact the mask, performing a WEC. This is wedge error compensation. And then the optics come down to do alignment. Okay, I'm gonna try to show the process of alignment as much as I can. Alright, I'm going to try and show the process of alignment as much as I can. Let's see how this works. I got the GoPro on there too. Alright, so first I got some arrows for my optics. which you can see things moving around. All right. I'm gonna move my optics in. These are each adjustable. Because this wafer is tiny. All right, that's as close as that one will get into the center and so is this one all right so we have a right and a left side optic and we're going to do some aligning so here's a close look at what we're seeing and what i'm going to do is use these knobs to adjust the relative position of the wafer with respect to the mask. But first I'm going to find the alignment marks. And to do that, I'm going to move the camera, the microscope over to the alignment marks. Alright. So now I've seen some alignment marks. Uh, there's the alignment marks on the wafer. Somewhere around here is the alignment marks. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the alignment marks for the uh, for the mask. See? So I'm moving the wafer. The mask is staying stationary. Get that, getting warmer. All right. Let's see if I can. One thing I can do. So that's the whole left side, left side view. Okay. So you may see there's a cross. And this cross has got to be centered up. See that? All right, so that's the left side. Now I'll have to go to the right side 
and compensate for any tilt or angle adjustment. So, let's go back to split field. And, going to move into the right side. All right, that's not terrible. The contrast on this relatively old tool is not great, uh, but again, you can see there's the cross and its mating partner. Not too far off in terms of theta, thankfully. So I'm going to move the theta a little bit and then I'm going to translate and switch back to split. So the right side is lined up pretty well. Let's see what the left side looks like. Left side is okay. It's not great. Let me zoom in a little bit off. So I'm going to do a combination of theta correction and translation. The reason I'm doing it this way is sort of iteratively is because I can't image both sets of alignment marks at the same time. Where I could if I had a four inch wafer. It's just the way the optics, we're at the edge of the travel of the optics. We can't put the objectives that close together. So again, a little bit of theta, a little bit of translation. Let's go look at the other side. bit of focus. So look at the other side again. All right. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So now, we're ready to do an exposure. Uh, so what we're going to do is check our parameters. The exposure is a function of the photoresist. Um, thicker the photoresist, usually more exposure time. And this is ultraviolet light in here. So. All right. So I checked our handy dandy log book which is currently 18, 13, 12 seconds. There. So I'm going to change this parameter. 12 seconds. The lamp is held at constant power. Um, as it ages, the, uh, the tool uh, provides more electrical power to maintain constant, well, brightness. Optical power. Optical flux, I guess, the milliwatts per square center. So it maintains a constant flux by adjusting the lamp power. All right, so now, so now, we are ready to do an exposure, which is kind of cool. All right, fire away. I press the exposure button. Now the optics will rise up and the lamp housing will move forward and it'll light it up. Here's our exposure, ultraviolet light. Current lamp power is 420 watts.
Lamp housing moves back and it lowers the wafer. I forgot to mention it puts the wafer in contact with the mat. This is contact exposure. This is not the same sort of technique that's done in the IC industry. In the IC industry, um, they expose through uh, a mask that is not in contact and it's demagnified by usually a factor of five. Also, the light they use in the IC industry is much shorter wavelength. All right, now it says unload, full slide and unload exposed substrate. All right, that's it. Now to develop.